Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, quickly two things today. Scientific notation, remember that? We've done it before. Uh, this you should know. Just make sure if you don't have this in your notes somewhere, um, write this. That's the, you know, the, that's how we uh, designate scientific notation. You'll say a number times 10 to the n power. And then uh, the x here has to be between 1 and 10. It can be 1, but it can't be 10. It has to be lower than 10. Um, but it can be 1 or between 1 and 10. So uh, you've seen these before, so we'll, we'll go through these very quickly. We're going to get to a point when we do this now. But let's take 312 and uh, write it in scientific notation. Now, part of the reason people write things in scientific notation is because, it, uh, first off, it saves you from having to write these gigantically large numbers, um, you know, distances between stars and so on, with just a bunch of zeros. Or let's say the length of a bacterium in microns or whatever it is, and it's point zero 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 zero. you know, there's two things. It takes up too much space, and the second thing is, is, is it like it's, it, it increases the chances of the errors. You count those zeros wrong. So anyway, you don't want to count an extra zero like blow up a laboratory or something like that. Okay, but you can count that as science if you do that, blowing up a lab for homeschool. Okay, well there is where the decimal is now. If you move it over twice, that means actually what you're doing is you're dividing by a hundred or ten to the second. If you have a number and you're dividing by ten to the second. Well, to even things out, you're going to go, okay, my new number is this, but you also need to go times 10 to the second, all right? That's your scientific notation, all right? This number is between 1 and 10. There's your 10 to the whatever power, all right? You'll, you'll, you'll see patterns if you don't already know them already about moving decimals. We're going to have, there's a decimal here. To get this between 1 and 10, we'll have to move this three times. So our new number is 9.875. Now, by doing that, what you're actually doing is you're turning 9,875 into 9.875, which means you have divided by 1,000 or 10 to the third power. Well, you don't just go around announcing that your number has turned into, you know, 1,000 times less. You just have to rewrite it a little differently. If you divide it by 1,000, you're going to multiply it by 1,000 to undo that, but you have a new format. All right, this one is a smaller number, and you will find that smaller numbers, the decimal numbers, uh, are going to be, they're going to show up with negative exponents, okay? So 0 0.0436, we're going to have to move this to the right twice, and that gives us 4.36. What we've actually done is we've multiplied by 100, and we're going to have to now divide by 100. Now, dividing by 100 uh, means we are going to go like this. In other words, if you divide by 100, there's some number divided by 100. Remember our old rule about moving things like this? If you move 10 squared up there, it turns into 10 to the negative 2. And so this will be 4.36 times 10 to the negative 2. Now this is helpful for chemistry and biology and things like that. You're going to, I mean, if you take other homeschool co-op classes, you'll probably look around in the room at some point and realize that like if the, if the teacher gives some kind of a math homework, all the kids are flopping and floundering around, you won't be. Okay, you'll, you'll know how to do this. And I'll show you an example of how to do this in a second without a calculator or anything, all right? You tell me, pause it, and tell me what is 80,000 divided by 400, then write the numbers and the answer in scientific notation. Well, you know what? You don't have to pause it. Let's just do the, do the problem. Okay, 80,000 divided by 400. Well, how many 400s go into 800? The answer is 2. So we have two extra zeros. So the, we know the answer is 200, all right? 80,000 divided by 400 equals 200, all right? Now here's a neat thing that you can do. 80,000, let's write that in scientific notation. Decimal's right there. You move it over four times. You get eight times 10 to the fourth power. This one, 400, you move it over twice. That gives you 4 times 10 to the second power. Well, the answer to that is 200, and you move that over, and that gives you 2 times 10 to the second power. Now, notice what's happening here. When you divide a number in scientific notation by another number in scientific notation, you're going to get a number like this. And how do you get that number? We're saying here's how you do it. You divide this number by that number to give you this one. Then you divide this by that to give you this one. And don't forget, when you divide, in other words, if you have 10 to the fourth power divided by 10 to the second power, you're actually subtracting. That goes away, that goes away, that's what's left. So in other words, 10 to the fifth, let's say, divided by 10 to the second, 
that will give you 10 to the third power. Okay, so that works. This method works. So if it works for this, it will work for our next page, which you will be very pleased to see. All right, so pause and copy this. Okay, I'm assuming you paused and copied. What we're going to do is figure out this entire thing with no calculator whatsoever, just by using arith you know, arithmetic, subtracting and dividing and you know, the basic operations. That's it. So let's take each one of these in turn. Let's take the top left, move it over three times. That gives you three times 10 to the... Now, since you've multiplied, you're going to divide by 10 to the third. So in other words, you're kind of doing this. It's almost like 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 to the third. This goes up there and turns into 10 to the negative third. So that'll be 10 to the negative ninth. All right, top right, 4,000, piece of cake, move it over three times. That's four times 10 to the third power. We good? All right, let's look at the bottom ones. Over three times again, that'll be six times 10 to the, and we're gonna subtract three from 15, that'll be 10 to the 12th power. Bottom right, 2,000, yoink, three times, that's gonna be two. And since we divided by 1,000, we're gonna multiply this part by 1,000, or 10 to the third. So 10 to the fourth times 10 to the third is 10 to the seventh. Yep, there we go. Now you probably see, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do this the long way, and then you, you can skip a step or two if you need to, but three times four is 12. Oh, down here, 6 times 2 is 12. We can write those. Up top, we have 10 to the negative 9th times 10 to the positive 3rd. Well, negative 9 plus 3 is negative 6. Down here, we have 12 and we have 7. That's going to be 10 to the 19th, okay? Now we can go like this. 12 divided by 12, 1. 10 to the negative 6 divided by 10 to the 19th, we're subtracting. Don't forget, right? Or if you want to think of it this way, you can mash this up here and turn it into 10 to the negative 19th. Well, negative 6 minus 19 is negative 25, and there is your answer, okay? A lot easier to write that than to write, you know, point oh 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 you know, whatever, I mean, tons of zeros and then a 1, okay? And there you go, and that's it. You can do these kind of uh, calculations, not in your head probably, but on paper, zing, about one minute, and you got it, and, uh, you know, piece of cake. All right, let's look at the second half of this. And we're going to talk about two statements of equality. And we're going to mess with, they're going to give you a little word problem, puzzle, happy fun puzzle. And they're going to say the ratio of two numbers is this and this, and something else about them is this. Okay, well, if you have two numbers that are unknowns, you got to have two equations to solve it. So that's what we're going to do. So let's actually write two equations out of these two little, you know, factoids they give you. The ratio of two numbers is three to four. All right, let's go. Okay, well, the ratio of two numbers is 3 to 4. There's an equation. Their sum is 84. So A plus B is 84. Good enough? Not that hard, right? Okay. Well, there's, we can't really put this into this. We need an actual equation here. So let's just go ahead and cross multiply and give ourselves an equation. That's going to give us 4 times A is equal to 3 times B. So we can stick that over here if we want to, you know, 4a is equal to 3b. Well, what I would do at this point is just to substitute. Take this equation and let's make it, I don't know, let's, let's put b to the other side. a is equal to 84 minus b. Well, if a is equal to 84 minus b, we can take this equation here and go 4 times, not a, but 84 minus b is equal to 3b. 4 times 84, if you remember your 84 tables, that's 336, minus 4b is equal to 3b. Okay, I guess I'll break my rule here and move this 4b over here to give us 4b. So 336 equals 7b, and you can use a calculator if you want to, and b is going to be 336 divided by 7, which is 48, all right? If b is 48, if b is 48, you can just plop it back in here if you want to, or in this equation, doesn't matter. And you can figure out at this point that A is equal to 84 minus 48, or 36. My question for you is this. We know their sum is 84. Is their ratio 3 to 4? Well, yeah, 3 goes into uh, 36 12 times. And, uh, excuse me, let's, let's, let's do it this way. 12 goes into 36 3 times. 
and 12 goes in the 48, four times. So there's your three to four ratio, boom, you got it, all right. Okay, let's try one more. This one's a piece of cake. The sum of two numbers is 128. You tell me, what should I write? The sum of two numbers is 128. Yep, that's it. Their difference is 44. What are the two numbers? Okay, there you go. Piece of cake. I'm not even bother to solve this. You can use substitution or you could just use elimination. You know, and add right straight up and down if you want to. Get rid of the B's or get rid of the A's. You can subtract. It doesn't matter. So there's your way to solve it. Okay, all right. Go ahead and give practice problem A a whirl and then pause it and come back. Okay, the ratio of two numbers is 4 to 5. Stop. There is the ratio. A to B is 4 to 5. Let's go ahead and write this as an equation. That gives us 5 times A equals 4 times B. All right, their sum is 108. Well, that's easy. A plus B is 108. All right, well, what are the numbers? Let's just move this B over and say it's 108 minus B. That's A. And I will put this, <coughs> rewrite this as that. So that gives me 5 times 108 minus B equals 4 times B. So 5 times 108 is 540 minus B equals 4B. I'll break my little rule again here and move this over. Over there, that gives me 9B equals 540. And so 9 times what gives you 540? Of course, the answer would be 60. So B is 60. Well, if B is 60, A is going to be 108 minus 60. So A is going to be 48. Is the ratio 4, 4 to 5? Well, 12 goes in the 48, 4 times. 12 goes in the 60, 5 times. Zing, we got it. There you go. Okay. Go ahead and uh, pause it and try practice problem B. All right, piece of cake here. The sum of two numbers is 136. There you go. The difference is 50. There you go. And I'm just going to add straight on up and down. I'm going to add it. A plus A is 2A. That goes away. 136 plus 50 is 186. A, uh, 186 divided by 2 is 93. There we go. And all we need to do now is go, okay, well, you know, if A is 93, A minus something is 50. So B, we just did the arithmetic. That'd be 43. Okay. And uh, that's it. Do 93 and 43 add up to 136? Yes, they do. Is there a difference 50? Yep, it sure is. And that's all there is to it. All right. See you guys next time. Have a great day.